You're watching Good Day Orlando on Fox 35. On the Health Watch this morning, research shows that about 10% of couples in this country are going to have a hard time getting pregnant. The surprising thing is, it's not always the woman who is struggling with the fertility problem. About 30% of the time, it's the man that has the fertility problem. Well, it turns out there are also several surprising things that we encounter each and every day that can impact our fertility. And joining us this morning to talk more about it is Dr. Mark Charles with Fertility Care. Great to see you, Doc. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure, Amy. Some of these things, maybe not so surprising. This one was not surprising to me the fact that secondhand smoke can be a big issue and we've even talked in recent months about thirdhand smoke the smoke that's in the carpet in the couch in the blankets if you smoke inside the house well we know that smoking uh, if the individual is smoking accelerates for the woman accelerates ovarian aging they lose their eggs faster and they can actually go into menopause sooner women who smoke have lower pregnancy rates higher rates of pregnancy complications like miscarriage and ectopic pregnancy but secondhand smoke is just as bad and it also affects the man sperm fertilization goes down there's some genetic implications on the egg as well as the sperm. So smoking is a bad actor for fertility. They need to stop if you are smoking. And within a year, studies are suggesting that your fertility can return. What if it's your spouse who smokes? If you're the female and it's your husband who's smoking, should he also quit? Absolutely, because secondhand smoke. First of all, if you're trying to conceive, smoking is going to reduce the sperm fertilization potential. So the man should definitely stop smoking and to help themselves but also the woman. Right, absolutely. This one's interesting, cell phone signals. We've talked for a long time about, gosh, we really don't know how dangerous these things are that we're keeping in our pocket and our purses so close to our body all the time. What are your thoughts there? Well, you hit it right on the head. Cell phone studies are really in their infancy because the dramatic increase in cell phone usage has only been in the past 10 to 20 years. So they're starting to look into what health effects there are. What we're seeing now with cell phones is a recent meta-analysis, which is a study that looks at all other studies so it's a very powerful tool and what we're seeing is that cell phone usage in the man reduces sperm motility okay the movement of the sperm but we have to keep it in perspective it's only an eight percent decrease in motility and it hasn't been shown to directly correlate with their ability to conceive okay. it's really just some studies now looking at the sperm function so we know a little de decrease in motility some viability decrease but the count is unclear and no studies are showing pregnancy rates okay so just to be on the safe side keep the phone in your back pocket not in your front I don't know if I would keep it in the pelvic area because we're still at looking all. into whether whether okay. it has an effect at all so all right. yeah uh, it, it, but you know it's it also has the same thing to do with the the boxes versus the briefs things you know the right the, the, right so so we don't have definitive evidence but we try to reduce any effects on the pelvic area okay and just real quick on the last point I don't know how quick you can go with stress because yeah. this is something we all deal with the stress issue is still in debate. Okay. Uh, this study uh, from, from Ohio State and Maryland looked at uh, the time to conceive in women and they did stress gauges, okay? They looked at this uh, alpha, uh, uh, salivary alpha amylase pr uh, protein. Uh, they looked at that and they saw that there were higher levels in women that were trying to conceive. It took them longer, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, but the problem with this study that I have is that, th that this enzyme that's being looked at in the saliva is not very accurately tested. Um, so it's it's debatable over whether it was really an impact on that. Another okay. quarter, another level did not show that to be the case. So stress, yes, uh, it definitely will decrease the quality of life, but I don't think this ends the argument that stress absolutely is going to prevent patients from trying to conceive. It may take a little bit longer in this study, but it does not prevent you from getting pregnant. Okay. Dr. Mark Charles from Fertility Care. Always a pleasure, sir. Thank you, Mark. and happy belated birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, John, let's send it over to you. All right, guys, thanks.